poker's time is now. If you play, this is the tournament to be in. Players from around the globe all hoping to get their hands on the PartyPoker.net World Open 2 trophy. Oh, and there's the small matter of a $200,000 prize. It doesn't get any better than this. Hello, Cleveland. Jesse May back in the saddle again with Cowboy Kenna James. Oh, thanks, Jess. It's fantastic to be sitting next to you. I got to tell you, you look fantastic tonight. We're lemon and lime. But <laughs> fill in that second semifinal. And uh, last week, Connor Tate played pitch perfect oh. to get there. You know, it's so exciting when you see someone play above the rim. We see it in basketball with Michael Jordan. We see it in golf with Tiger Woods. And last week we saw it with Connor Tate in poker. So exciting to see someone play their cards so well. Well, can anyone match Connor? We've got a worldwide field this evening, so let's see who's filling the chairs. My name is John Nugent. I'm from Spokane, Washington, United States. Uh, I qualified online at Party Poker. Uh, I've been playing for about seven years. Poker is all about the, the challenge. Uh, I take it, try to take it to the next level. I uh, had moderate success so far, so I hope we can take it and take it to the next step. My name is Eric. I'm from Gothenburg, Sweden. I've been playing for uh, two years, uh, almost only online and almost only cash games. So this is my first uh, big live tournament. My name is Dean Johnson and I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico in the United States. I'm very competitive, trying to learn and be a student of the game while still uh, taking myself to the next level. Uh, I really enjoy the game, so I think I can add a lot. My name is Michelle Barra. Uh, I live in London. I've only been on television once before and I lasted one hand. Uh, so. I've got no preconceived ideas about how I'm going to go or not. My name's John Cabage. Uh, I've been playing poker for about 12 years now. I've been doing really well the last, last year or so, so things are looking good. It's about the money, but it's also about proving my ability and making sure that I improve every year. My name's Kev Atkin, um, I'm a builder from Chelmsford, Essex in England. Uh, I've been playing poker for two years and I'm an online qualifier. This is only the second time I've played um, live, uh, previous time, won about three and a half thousand euros. What I love about the game is the, uh, is the overall challenge really. I, do, I, do, I just enjoy pitting myself against other people. One from every corner of the globe. And you know, young Scandinavians have done so well in this tournament and poker lately. How about this Eric Alberg? Wow, incredible. You know, it, have we seen a Swede come in here and play bad? I don't think so. It'll be interesting to see how he plays his cards tonight. Yeah, 21 years old and he's got the cravat. But the <laughs> favorite has to be John Kabaj. Of all the players at the table, he's got the laurels. He's got World Series of Poker number two in an event there. Right. Plenty of titles on the scene. How is he going to take on the qualifiers? Wow, you know, and I tell you, some of them come from as far as way away, rather, as Spokane, Washington, Dean Johnson from Dallas, Texas. I don't think these guys have packed their luggage, traveled 14 hours to go out in the first hand. I'm sure they'll mount a challenge for it. It'll be like a World Cup of poker down there. So let's get over to the table and watch the action get underway. Off and running. Cards coming down on the table very soon in this heat of the World Open. Players will begin the game as per usual with a 100,000 starting stack of chips. The yellow chips that you see are worth 1,000 each, the blue chips worth two, and the red chips 5,000, putting 600,000 on this table. And you can't leave a winner unless you've got them all.
race to 5,000 total. John Cabbage there with the Queen Jack seemed a bit first. unsure under the gun whether he should raise, call, or fold. He's chosen the first, first. option, made it 5,000, and first. taken Kevin Atkins straight off the two threes. Yeah, that's a nice Fold. fold by Kevin Atkins getting out of the way there. And look at Dean Johnson, also from America. Albuquerque, New Mexico, walks up, wakes up with pocket rockets. Yeah, and he's slow playing them, just smooth calling from the small blind. He could have Kabaj in a terrible bind, especially if wow. Kabaj hits the flop. And look at this full house for Johnson. Well, this might be check. too much. Check. Uh, a dream come true for Dean Johnson, flopping aces full the first hand he plays out of the gate. <laughs> it's a good opportunity to either see John Kabaj's escape. Down. 6, techniques or his chance to do a lot of chips Pass. and uh, he manages to get away from this one without putting another chip in the pot pretty impressive but Johnson will show him well not too impressive I mean he had queen high he had nothing to call with pass 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 Raised to 5,000 total. Pass. That is Kevin Atkin getting out of the way. Here's John Nugent from Spokane, Washington, looking at 6-5. He's having success. Pulse. That breeds confidence, which means more hands. Check. Check. Nugent's flopped an up and down straight draw and now hit it. Three, Check. four, five, six, seven, although three diamonds on the board may scare him. And he's trying to induce a bluff here from Kabaj, who may bite. Well, I don't know why he, he would try to induce a bluff with three diamonds on board. Raise. This is a good play. 18,000. 18, you are total. correct, Jesse Bluff May, because he did induce the the bluff, and now he's putting some heat on Kabaj. I mean, John Kabaj is drawing live to a split, but he has to consider he's drawing dead here, doesn't he? Well, absolutely. He's obviously going to fold this Pass. hand. Another nice uh, pot and good table ed image from John Nugent, who, as you said, might have a welcome home party at the airport. When he comes home. I mean, not only did Nugent call a raise before the yeah. flop with the 5-6, he then put in a whole bunch of chips with a couple diamonds on board. He's not scared. Couple He's diamonds. scared to play. A few diamonds. He, there, <laughs> fear is not a factor for John Nugent. I'm calling him out. I'm saying he's a liar. He told me he was going to play tight. Well, you know, he, he also said, though, he was going to, you know, see what the game offered and, and – uh, and move his strategy to the play of the game. And per perhaps he sensed that this game was, you know, that the players are nervous, they're tight, and he was going to play the opposite, a very effective strategy in No Limit Hold'em. He's not from Washington at all. He's not? He's not a real estate broker. He's Phil Helmuth's nephew. <laughs> <laughs> this cool. is a big hand for LaSalle. Cool. cool. He has Pass. just limped in with it, ace-king nice. suited. And he's Race. caught if he's trying to set a trap. Wow. Now, look at this surprise, though, Jesse May. Now, Kevin Atkin, after l getting Pass. away from that ace high flush draw, brings it, now raises with the queen jack of spades. Yeah, I mean, Kevin Atkin has picked up that LaSalle Barrow may be loose before the flop. But uh, what Barrow has done here. Look at this acting job by LaSalle Barrow. Huh? The look of concern, the, f the furl of the brow. Fantastic to see him cool. stick a little re-raise cool. in here. But he is playing this real slow and giving Atkin an opportunity to get in real deep, but also perhaps to outflop him, KJ. Yeah. I think he is uh Wow, he's backpedaled himself into a lot of trouble okay. as Kevin Atkin has flopped top pair. Queen Jack. Eight thousand. You know, LaSalle Barrow might be the favorite at this stage. Two over cards and the nut flush draw? It's going to be very close. You're right. It's a good flop for both players. I, I'd rather have the made hand, even though, as you see in the percentages, Barrow, it has a, him as a 53% favorite to make his hand. 
8,000 is bet and called, and the Jack of Hearts would be the World Fair for Barrow. Although at this stage, I think he'd settle for any help. Yep, a harmless eight of diamonds, is at least for Atkins. Uh, perspective falls on the turn. And this right. is the biggest pot of the night, KJ. Yep. It's 33,000 already. And Barrow 10, now, he attacks. He fires out. Well, this is a real tester for <coughs> Atkin. Did you see how much he bet there, Jesse May? I believe it's 10,000. And Atkin's heart is pounded well, like a jackhammer. Six, seven. It looks like Should he have raised 000. there? No, I think, you know... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised he, he called after he laid down that last hand. It's a harmless nine for Kevin Atkin. Barrow at this point swimming way upstream. Yeah, Barrow on no hand, but he's reaching deep here. He's going blue. He'll have to go red if he wants to get Atkin off this pot. 10,000. 10, That's not going to do it. No, I think this is an easy call for Kevin Atkin. He's going to go into the tank a little bit here. He is. He does not like to give up a chip. Does Kevin Atkin a good look at him there I mean, from Middlesbrough? Realistically, uh, can, a, can Atkin beat anything other than a bluff? Oh, absolutely. There's plenty of hands that he could beat. Uh, not only, you know, you said a bluff. I mean, there's four five is a missed straight. Any two hearts is a missed flush. How about queen nine? Well, queen nine would make uh, two pair, but queen 10 he could beat. I mean, there's just too many hands. He has to call this. If he does not call this pot, he he will be in. This would bode very bad for him. And he lays it down. Wow. Atkins says, I believe. And uh, he would not make a very good Bible salesman because LaSalle Barrow has just taken one away. Entering the second level now, blinds will be two and 4,000. And a topsy-turvy first level, the favorite, John Kabaj is the short stack, and perhaps the most inexperienced player at the table, LaSalle Barrow, has roared <laughs> to the lead. So. Very interesting point, Jesse May. As we have seen and witnessed in No Limit Hold'em, even last week, anything can happen. That's yes. what makes this game so exciting. And what about this John Kabaj? Is he doing anything yes. wrong? Is overconfidence yes. sometime make a player play too many hands? Well, you know, he had a very lackadaisical oh. type of attitude and approach in his interview yes. session. Uh, and it's kind of translated here. Maybe his recent success has, uh, as you say, allowed him to rest on his, you know, uh, laurel, so to speak. Yeah, you've in the always got to bring your A game in poker. But there has been a raise from John Nugent on the button, and Dean Johnson has called with a very weak holding in the big Check. blind. Is Johnson smelling a rat? Check, both checked. Well, you you so know, actually, I think it might have been an unraised pot. I, yeah, it was a, I think Check. it was a limp in the... Uh, on the button, the Check. pot's only yeah. 10,000, and that may be why Johnson decided to play the 10-5. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't see uh, Johnson playing the 10-5 in a raised Check. pot. He's played very conservative at this point. So I think that was just a missed call from the perch here in the booth. And uh, by checking it three times, John Nugent has actually gained an opportunity to show that he's a tight player. He showed down an ace that he's just limped in with. I mean, if you're sitting on that table, you're going to say, geez, he just limps in with ace-7. He's tight. Well, what did he have? The, the question goes to their minds is what did he have before? You know, and you're right. It brings some legitimacy to his previous hands. So Nugent may be playing games besides with his razor. And uh, Pass. playing games besides with his razor. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse May, I don't want to be in your bathroom in the morning, my friend. Huh? You've got that razor juggling the razor. Uh, I don't want to be around. Cool. Any raise? Another limp in no from race. Nugent, who's basically playing every hand with ease right now. And you can do that when no one is punishing you behind. Good point. You know, when things, you take what the game gives. And, it, and as long as it keeps giving, you keep on taking. And here it is. He flops three ducks. Check. Three deuces on the flop for John Nugent. Yeah, and LaSalle Barrow's got a top pair. Oh, yep, this is wow. Let's see how he likes to play this. Call. A quick call. Pass. This hand made for milking. 
And is Nugent playing this the best way to maximize value right now? Absolutely. You said he's milking. He's got both hands on the nipples as it comes a jack. This Check. will certainly be the demise of uh, Check. LaSalle Barrow. Oh, they're both check. They're both trapping. And if it comes wow. a six or a queen, Nugent will rue the day. It comes a king. Very interesting because now I expect Nugent to, to make a nice size Ten raise five. here. And then there might even be a re-raise by Barrow, which would be a tragic demise. Raise. That's exactly what's going to happen. Certainly would. Uh, I'm wondering. I mean, obviously, Nugent would love to get oh, all 25. the money in. 25000 I think he's going to because I think Barrel will probably re-raise here. Barrel do wonderful just to call. That would be his the best thing that could happen oh, to him. But, but if he re-raises... He might go oh. on empty. Oh. He does flat call. A great flat call by LaSalle Barrow. Wow. And can it, sometimes in an effort to trap, can a player not get maximum value? Is that what happened to John Nugent or is it? Right, and that's a great point, Jesse May. I believe in trapping by betting, not trapping by checking. Sometimes you can make smaller bets. <laughs> and trap your opponents, making them think you're weak by making, you know, small, indiscriminate bets. I mean, everything's going f fantastic for Nugent. He's got 170,000. He's the runaway chip leader right now. But could he have gotten all his chips in the center? Don't know. He's won eight hands already. Absolutely. But I think that was at least 50,000 that got away from Nugent from the, you know, the uh, very smart play by Barrow and losing the minimum in that pot. Poker is a challenge, uh, you know, it's, it's an ongoing process, I'm always learning different strategies, different aspects of the game. Uh, as soon as you think you know everything, you're, you're stuck in the wind, so I, I'm always about finding different concepts and, and different strategies to win. I'm hoping to put a good showing, uh, I like my chances, six-handed, fast format, uh, I've got some chips to play with, I, I like my chances. John Nugent sets the pace early on, but there is still plenty more poker to be played at this table. Look at Kevin Nugent's stack in the foreground of your screen. He's John Nugent, pardon me. He's been a revelation so far. Mm -hmm. Pass. And uh, finds himself. Pass. Pass. Under the gun. Pass. Out of the hand. Call. Honey raise. Just a flat call by Kabaj here, setting uh, his opponent up with two tens. Little does he know that Kevin Atkin has got ace king. These chips have gone all in. Kabaj did try and set the trap, and uh, it's going to be hard to see who's gotten trapped here. Only the flop is going to tell because we've got a race. Absolutely, we do. And I don't see Kevin Atkin laying this down. He's already laid down two big hands, and I think he's tired of being pushed around. I think he's going to make a stand with this ace king. And as you said, Jesse May, we're going to have a race situation. Yeah, I mean, not only is John Kabaj covered, but uh, he will not be happy to find himself in a 50-50 shot for all his chips. Not quite 50-50, Jesse May. In this instance, it's like 55-45 because the two tens, you know, make it more unlikely for Akin to make a straight. If it was two eights, he would have straight possibilities, so it would be closer to 50-50. Uh, so Kabaj with a little, you know, slightly the better of it here. True, although looking at Kabaj's body posture, he doesn't look like a man who enjoys 55%. <laughs> Looks like he's taken the wrong end of those before. Yeah. And Atkins really in the tank here. I, is it, can you can you see Atkins folding here? I, it seems impossible. He has. You know, he's folded some big hands. We're into the mind now of Kevin Atkin. There he is, a good look at him. If John Kabaj turned his hand yeah, over, it would last. still be correct for Atkin to call, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Now, now the clock has been called. That's a 30-second clock on Kevin Atkin. So if the pressure of his opponent's chips isn't enough, Pass. the clock adds to that pressure, and he folds. Wow. 
Ken, I'm very surprised. Do you think perhaps it was a strong statement by Kev Atkin to fold, saying that he also doesn't want to call his chips on a gamble, that he feels he can play his way out of this? Well, I think the key to that hand was the limp re-raise by Kabaj. It sold a much bigger hand than two tens, and I think that Kevin Atkin may have put him on two kings or two aces and didn't want to be drawing very slim. Stunning stuff. It takes a man to fold ace king, but as Doyle Brunson said, Pass. to be a good player, sometimes you have to dog Pass. the best hand. Cole. And uh, LaSalle Barrow there. Doyle Brunson said that? I, I believe he said hand. great players sometimes dog Cole. the best hand. Mm. Cole, any raise? <clears throat> I think you'll find it's in Super System. <laughs> ah, very nice. Yes. No race. Is that a book? <laughs> I don't read books. <laughs> Look at this. Full house flop wow. by Kev Atkin. And uh, that could be the reason Check. that you wait for a better opportunity. Kev Atkin Check. folded Ace King Check. last time and has been gifted the full house on the flop. Well, in sometimes Check. the game rewards you for good play. 8, and he's certainly rewarded here. This time he's a prohibitive favorite. Almost got the lockdown on Kabaj, who's fired at this pot. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Talk about <laughs> sweet revenge. And what is John Nugent thinking? Well, he's got an open end straight. He's thinking, will an ace or a six win this pot for me? Could I win a major pot and, you oh. know? Cool. Little does John Nugent know he's drawing dead. But he's got illusions of grandeur, you know, and uh, if an ace or a six should fall, uh, that could uh, really spell trouble for John Nugent. Kev Atkin must be singing butterflies right now, although that will oh. not be the card he wanted to see. No, not at all. Look at Do you see his jaw just tighten up a little bit? because he realizes now anybody with a bigger pair in their hand would counterfeit his, uh, his flopping his full house. Right, all of a sudden, Kev Atkin is not playing two deuces oh. in his hand, but only yes. one, and uh, that's no fun. Oh. No, it's okay. certainly yes. not. But it's gonna be enough as the competition goes away and he'll be relieved to drag that pot after that ugly turn card. Yeah, that was an elevator hand. His heart went to the roof of his mouth and back to the bottom of his toes again before settling in its rightful place, and he's raked the chips. John Nugent on top of our leaderboard, 152,000, followed closely behind by Kevin Atkin. He's got 123. LaSalle Barrow still on top of the starting watermark with 108. Eric Alberg holding on patiently with 73,000. And uh, John Kebab and Dean Johnson bringing up the caboose, 72,000 apiece. Lines out there, two and 4,000. Oh. And, uh, you know, LaSalle Barrow has played the most hands. I think of anybody in this at this table. But to be fair, cool. he's gotten cool. a lot of quality starting hands, hasn't yes. he? He certainly has. You know, and, and that's how this cool. game goes. Anybody it goes in race. waves. Sometimes you'll you won't see a hand for a long, long time. As as we look down at Eric Alberg's cards, he has not seen a hand this whole tournament. And uh, you know, and then somebody like Barrow is getting every hand possible. So you never. You know, and then may, it might change the next round. <laughs> Albert, yeah. Albert just Check. grateful there to be able to see a Check. flop <laughs> with his seven deuce. Check. But interestingly Check. enough, Lucell Barrow currently in the lead with the two sixes, and they're still good. Although John Nugent has yeah. made a flush draw, and this uh, sixteen thousand total, a semi bluff, 16, mm -hmm. may just take the money. Pass. Nice bet of sixteen thousand, and uh, I think this will probably Pass. win the pot for him. Semi bluff, a very Pass. powerful play in No Limit Hold'em. Yeah, first, uh, of course, when uh, you're, you're betting. Uh, <laughs> it refers to when you're bluffing, but if you've, you've got outs, if, you've got, if you get called, isn't that right? Right, a semi bluff, <laughs> meaning that uh, you're not out there on a pure bluff with no, no hand, no draw. You actually have a big draw, and uh, if you do get called, you have the out of making your hand and therefore it's a semi-bluff. 
I've heard the term, but struggle to use it in context. <laughs> you were struggling with spelling <laughs> Albuquerque yes. earlier, too. Right. Yes, but Rays. the governor of New Mexico is named it's 10, Bill. 10,000 total. <laughs> <Pass>. <laughs> There's been a raise to 10,000 by John Kabaj, and uh, with A6, is he showing a little Pass. desperation at the seams? Call. Call. Dean Johnson peeling off a flop here, and uh, Johnson calling any bet before the flop has to send the alarm bells ringing. Yeah, he's played a very conservative game thus far tonight. Top pair versus a gut check. straight check. draw. Check. Checked. John Kabaj has knuckled it. Johnson a free shot at the 10. And he's hit it! Wow! Broad Check. way straight. Check. The straight comes rolling in Check. and the Ten slow thousand. play not working for Kabaj. He slow played him self right into the nuts. Dean Johnson counting, well, fainting, and looking like he's yeah. just swallowed his lunch. He's not slow played himself into the nuts. He's slow played himself into the nuts of Dean Johnson. Cool. cool. Oh, wow, that's great. That's great. Dean Johnson is going to be able to extract maximum value on the river here, KJ. It is a nine. Absolutely. Now let's see if Dean uh, elects to bet here or continue to slow play with a check and induce a bluff. I think a nice size bet, maybe around 24,000 would be great. Be just a little bit more than half the pot. I like the way he's played this. Dean Johnson had flopped a big hand very early on with aces full against Kutaj. But he's weighted this one in such a way as to really get paid. Well, he has, except this overacting here with this tentative bet has got to send alarm bells into Kabaja's head as he, he raises his glasses. He's seen this performance before. <laughs> he can't even keep his glasses on. You talk <laughs> about a frustrated <laughs> poker player. Somebody who's struggling. <laughs> Some days it's no fun going to the office, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> you know, he's seen this performance before, and I think he realizes he doesn't have the best hand, but he slow played it. Because, you know, he's finally hit a hand and he wants to get paid off. It's such a difficult and delicate balance, you know, uh, when to bet, when to check, when to call, when to fold. He, he reluctantly calls. At the end of the day, I think John Kabaj is just going to be sick and wanted to see what he was going to be sick about, Kenna. And he's probably sick that he didn't bet the flop. The key is that you, you, you have control of your own destiny. Um, a lot of people think it's just the luck, but when you've been playing as long as I have, then you know that obviously luck has a, a little bit to do with it, but you know, you're in control and you don't have to rely on anyone else. If you make a mistake, you make the mistake and you have to try and learn from that. If things go wrong, I don't panic and I know you can always come back and you know, my, my, my game is, is, I'm always very confident in my ability, so. You know, I always keep going till the end, really. Blinds are out. 9,000 in the pot Pass. before the cards come out. Folded around to Dean Johnson. Pass. And LaSalle Barrow. Oh, he has picked up some hands this evening. And he, he continues. He has. Will he Holy call? Holy cow. Hands coming like a buffet. Tempo. For LaSalle Barrow, picks up the pocket rockets, the best possible starting hand. Oh, this is a big tester for John Kabaj. This is where I believe he has sung his swan song. How can he get away from a king-queen suited? He cannot as he puts his chips over the line. And unless he gets extremely lucky, they will be down the well and he will be out of here. Marcel Barrow's going to trip all over himself to call here. Pocket aces, best starting hand in. 14,000 more called. And this is going to be one of the first hands turned over by LaSalle Barrow, <laughs> which is going to go uh, a long way to uh, building up that image uh, in, uh, as well in the other players' minds. John Kabaj chuckled to himself. That's the way his night has gone, and he is now 17% away from taking a long walk to first out. 
Five cards to come, but the ace is very strong right now. Wow, as good a flop as Kabaj could hope for. Queen 10 9, giving him a straight draw. Top pair, any queen, any king, any jack, and he survives and doubles up. We go to the turn. Yeah, he's got about nine outs, which is pretty much maximum. Three, no help, and uh, one card to come. Kabaj swallows twice. He doesn't look like he's expecting it. Here's the river. Okay. Two pair, aces up, hold up, and John Kabaj out in sixth. Can I, he never really got okay. going today. Everything he did seemed to be the wrong way around. Yeah, sometimes you go the wrong way on a one-way street. I was doing that one time uh, back in the good old USA, and the police pulled me over and said, uh, didn't you see the arrows? And I said, sir, I never saw the Indians. <laughs> One of the top European players and the favorite in this heat, John Kabaj, is out of here. Not much you can do face with pocket rockets. John is over with Kenna and Jesse now. Down to five players and John Kabaj, first man out. Commiserations, John. That hand that LaSalle Barrow turned over the aces, I think it was the first hand he turned over all night. Was It, it was kind of hard to figure out where he was at, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, actually I wanted to call him in a pot earlier, but I wasn't too sure, I hadn't, didn't have any information of him, so. What do you think the other players are thinking about LaSalle out there? Uh, well, they can see he's playing a lot of pots, so, yeah. you know, they, they, they're playing pretty tight anyway. Uh, I was just trying to sort of get on with it and just didn't really happen really. Well, tough day at the office, John. We'll all we'll see you again back here soon. Thank Could you. it be John Nugent? Let's see. Welcome back. Well, we've lost our first man, but there's still all to play for. Five still being dealt in. It's cards and chips in the air. Let's get back to it. Pass. Around to LaSalle Barrow. That's a pretty holding in late position. Cool. He's Hold. decided to limp in with it. Pass. Ace nine suited. And that's going to give Nugent a chance to raise to get a cheap flop. He doesn't want it cheap. He wants to raise, no wonder. Yeah. He wants to put money in this pot. He's got the pocket pair, pocket tens. Make it a total of 21,000. Okay, it's 21,000 total. Oh, this is a deluge mobile for Eric Alberg. Two sevens. He's got off him. What a fold. Like they were nothing. Wow. That's the biggest hand that Eric Allberg has picked up tonight. And he threw it in the muck, like you said, like it was Pass. the plague. I mean, the experience of this youngster, really an untold story tonight unfolding in front of us. I mean, with the frequency that Nugent has been betting and raising, two sevens looked like they could be well good. Pass. 6,000 on John Nugent. Call. Pass. And, uh, you know, he, he mixes up the Pass. raises, the calls before the flop. But at the end of the day, Kenna James, you talk about letting you, letting the game give you what it, you, t <laughs> you talk about doing what the game gives you. And right now, the game is giving John Nugent the opportunity to play lots and lots of hands. There has been no limpers tax put on him tonight. No, uh, a lot of times that won't work when you're in a, a game with tough professionals as, as they see those limps, they see an opportunity to pick up chips and will raise and take it away from you. <laughs> Not so okay. uh, for John Nugent, who has Four now times. got two overs and a gut shot straight. I expect him to play uh, this strongly and win this pot. It's a Check. pretty big flop for him, I think. He must have been giving himself a chance to hit a seven and win a big pot. Right. And now, I guess that he's missed. Is he? He's just trying to end it right here. Yeah, he's betting his position. His opponent has shown weakness twice. Checked on the flop and on the turn. And once again, there's a display of the power of position. Your opponent says they have nothing by checking twice. You fire a bet. You have nothing as well. But 
your position wins that pot. John Nugent raking the chips and thinking to himself, do you guys play here every day? <laughs> well, yeah, he is having it uh, pretty easy going so far tonight. Um, Kevin Akin lurking behind. Uh, can he step it up? He's, he's also had very good timing tonight other than those first Pass. two early hands. Dean Johnson once again in the cutoff position. That's one before the button. We call that the Raised. cutoff position. He makes 20, total. a raise of three times the big blind with ace Pass. eight of spades. There's 15,000 on offer and Johnson trying to take it with the ace Tentacle. eight. And this, what you were talking about earlier, Kenneth James, with a hand that John cool. Nugent would unlikely play for a big race he's enticed in and if he on out flops dean uh, johnson here johnson's gonna pay for it big time certainly is and he has done it jack five five the flop okay. nugent flopping top pair johnson with the continuation bet it looks like preparing to fire into the pot 26 26 000. he makes a twenty six thousand to nugent i'll put them all in all in. Quick all in from John Nugent. He's not worried about his kicker, and he shouldn't be. The jacks are good. And, uh, Kenna, this a problem that perhaps mm -hmm. Dean Johnson could have gotten away come. from with a bigger raise mm -hmm. preflop? Well, you know, it's very tricky, this game. Some players play best hand before the flop, and some players play best yes. flop. Nugent not worried about his starting hand. He's w more worried about the flop. He outflopped his opponent and then won the extra chips. Very well done. John Nugent has made a lot of statements so far this game, but that one perhaps the strongest. Don't come in with a small club. You need a billy heart, full heart scared, to man. bat me out. Good point, Jesse May. You know, it looks like most everybody at this table is playing cards. John Nugent, he's playing poker. He's playing the people. Uh, you know, uh... If you look scared, people start to treat you that way. Uh, mm -hmm. Eric Allberg, who is certainly not the most threatening guy at the table, um, Pass. has not done much scaring tonight. He's in the big blind, Pass. and will someone pick on him? Pass. I'm going to raise. Well, John raise. Nugent definitely willing to give action with Probably the two queens. Oh, no. Wow. This could be the end of Allberg. And uh, you really can't blame him for this move, Kenna James. No. It's almost like a cold deck. Well, it's the biggest hand he has seen tonight, other than the middle pairs. It's it's just very unfortunate for this youngster from Sweden, who's really uh, showed a lot of discipline and patience tonight not to be rewarded. Unless he should catch an ace here on the flop. Yeah, Allberg all in, but there is the chance of the bullet. Here and, uh, it comes to the flop, Jesse May. There's the ace. It's hiding Aww. behind the seven. And you know what? The Swede deserves a break. He certainly does. And he got it there as John Nugent shaking his head in disbelief yeah. as if he I cannot believe, believe the queen in there? what fell. Well, that heart changes nothing. There's still two queens to win yeah. for John Nugent. And uh, he'll have to hit one of them. He's feeling a bit aggrieved. But to be fair, this this really is the first bad stroke he's seen this evening. And uh, I think it'll be more exciting for the game to see what happens now that the playing field has been leveled. And uh, I, for one, want to see what this young Swede can do with some chips. Good point, Jesse, man. <laughs> Did, um... Did Nugent kind of set up that action by the way he's been picking on Allberg all evening? Well, you know, it could be, but I think those hands played themselves. Ace-10 in the big blind uh, when your opponent, you're right, is out there and being aggressive becomes very playable. And uh, he played his hand. He just happened to run Ace. into two queens. So he had to play the luck card. He did that very well. And he's doubled up, and he's right back in this tournament. Up the totem pole he goes. And Nugent, this is a big decision for him, Kenna James. Call. He decided just to call. Mm -hmm. Pass. You could have you could have seen him raise Pass. or fold. Well, I, I yeah, he could have played this any any taken any three of the options, raise, call, or fold. 
he's elected to flat call, which is uh, the one in the middle. So nothing wrong with that. Yeah, if he hits the flop, and he has, he'll be reasonably That's confident that his hand is good. But two clubs on board don't 15, hurt either. 000. And uh, Nugent is about to put the pain down. How much you got left? Oh, he asked a question. It's about 20. Sure did. About 95, 96. You got, you got a bunch of blues back there? Well, Kev Atkins stepping out with just king high, king queen, making a continuation bet. But it's a rather weak bet, Jesse. He bets 15,000 into a pot that has uh, 70,000 in it. So, Well, I mean, Nugent and Atkins have about the exact same stack. And even though Nugent, you get the feeling he'd like to More. move all in. But, all in. I mean, doesn't he know they can only be called by a hand that beats him? Well... Possibly, but uh, either way, he's he's taking a stand. He doesn't want to let another card fall off. If a jack should come, Atkin would make the straight, and he's already made that mistake once tonight. So nothing wrong, you know, if you feel like you have the best stand, moving your chips in and trying to pick it up right here. I believe that's what's going to happen, and that will go a long way to putting some salve on the wound from that last pot. Yeah, it's a good move. It's a strong move. It's a good, strong move. And Nugent, clearly of the mind that you have to be willing to dive over the cliff if you want a belly flop on the bottom. But uh, his parachute right now working good. <laughs> belly flop on the bottom is what's going to happen to Atkin if he decided to make that call, but he does not. The pot moved over to John Nugent as he writes his ship. Nugent has recovered well from both setbacks he's been dealt this evening, uh, Kenna James, and right. I think it'd be unwise to deal him out of this one. No, absolutely not. But, you know, that is going to be the story going forward. Draw. These blinds are up now, pretty good kicker, and pretty good uh, you can see some fissures. You can see some cracks in the armor of the patience and the discipline, which might win the day. Let's see how it unfolds. I mean, we've played quite a few levels to have five players left. Absolutely. And Pass. since these pots Pass. are getting so big, uh, it's pretty mm -hmm. likely we're going to have a lot of topsy-turvy motion in this leaderboard, isn't it? Yep, Cole. and somebody's going to get seasick. Let's no see race. who it will be. A flat call by Barrow with the king six of hearts. Checked his option. Does Kevin Atkin. LaSalle could have found a raise, but it worked out well. Top yep. pair versus bottom. Check. And uh, he may induce Kev Atkin to steam check. off a few check. chips. Both players flopping a pair as we go to the turn. Deuce or queen, operative cards, and I think that LaSalle Barrow is in desperate, desperate shape. 10, this is the This is the problem when you slow play. You bring your opponents into a hand oh. that they normally wouldn't play, and you cost yourself a lot of chips. Greed is a terrible thing. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes the game punishes you for it, and it will punish yeah. LaSalle Barrow here. He's done quite a bit of trapping this evening, but right now the trap is about to spring on him. Atkin checks once, and how big will he raise here? Well, I think he'll make a significant raise, at least double, maybe triple the amount of LaSalle Barrow's bet. You know, I heard that it is very painful when a bear trapper steps in his own trap. It shatters bones and legs and very, very painful. And that's exactly Raised. what I anticipate is gonna happen to LaSalle Barrow when he calls this race. Cool. Well, cool. Atkin has made a minimum raise. He must have thought that LaSalle didn't have much, but the wince on LaSalle's face proves you right. It's the Kenna. pain of the bear trapper. Yeah. <laughs> and a nice little recovery there for Kev Atkin. He lost one. He mm -hmm. won one. And uh, those chips are ones that are happy. Okay. That he's really happy to see in his stack. Leaderboard. Plenty of movement of late. Nugent lost the lead and took it back again. But how about Eric Alberg? Yep. He's right there. He, he vaulted from last to first. Now hanging right in there in the horse race. Bringing up the rear is Dean Johnson. Trying to make...
make something happen. He's going to have to double up or he will be the next one out. We'll sell Barrow on the button. Uh, DJ, Dean Johnson, has only got two hands before the blinds hit him, Kenna. And how seriously Pass. should he be thinking about getting his chips in? Very seriously, especially right. when he looks All down in. at Ace Jack. He does it. Cool. Cool. And he's called by the Pass. most opportune hand he wants to see, an ace weaker kicker by Lus LaSalle Barrow, who uh, has his own Pass. struggles. Yeah, it's, it's over half of LaSalle Barrow's stack, and uh, this is just about the best situation that Dean Johnson could find himself right. in. Both of these players struggling. Now, let's see, you know, really uh, where luck plays a factor here and who holds on and who goes home. Five cards to come. Johnson just trying to will the 10 away oh, from the yeah. board, yeah, and he couldn't not only will one away, but two. This is... Uh, this is pretty unfortunate for DJ. Certainly is. He's come a long way. Um, you know, you know, these players just oh. don't walk in the door. They spend many hours uh, playing to get here. It, it, and it's, I, I can tell you, my here, commiseration so. is It's, it's given Dean Johnson an out. Brilliant. I was just going to say, Kenneth oh, James, if it, if it had come the case that. ace on the river, Johnson would have split the pot, but it's all academic now. Yeah, that's Enjoy not an out, Jesse. That's a, that's a miracle. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Thanks. Good luck. Hey. Well, game four handed now, and Kenna, I'm just starting to get the feeling that this game has gone from one-way traffic to completely <laughs> wide open. Is it put on your seatbelts now? Absolutely. That's when it becomes dangerous. When you're out there, it's almost like you're walking across a freeway and dodging traffic. Very difficult to do. And now with the blinds higher, that's going to increase the pressure. It's going to put a premium on discipline and patience, which goes to Eric Alberg. But John Nugent has played his, his cards fantastically as well. Well, so it's anybody's guess. Well, Alberg may deserve the cards, but will he get them? Three more down to go. Four players gasping for air, although John Nugent, who has just Pass. cracked the 200 grand mark, Raise. is looking very slick. And uh, how much money has he won total. from the Pass. button position? Uh, let me take a look down here. Yes. Uh, Jesse and I will get back with you on that. <laughs> How about all of it? <laughs> every single dollar, every man of chips they could print, every amount of chips he could steal. But uh, I mean, his aggressive pre-flop play, can I mean, has that been the secret to Nugent's success? Um, well, I think he's pretty much had a balanced attack. Remember, he was calling earlier. Uh, and now he's raising, so it's a good variance that he has between calling and raising. Let's see how he elects raise. to play this one. He elects to raise. The blinds are higher now, so, you know, there's more to win out there. Pass. Makes it 25000 to go, but look at LaSalle Barrel, who wakes up with big slick, ace king, suited. Oh. Pretty Ed. much what the doctor ordered for LaSalle Barrow. Pass. And uh, it'll be... Interesting to see if Nugent can get off this hand. I tend to think he's good enough to fold it. Well, I just think the pot is probably too big for him to get away from this hand. He may be priced in the pot a hundred. It'll be about 75,000 more. And 38,000. <coughs> How much more? About 75,000 more. Wow, so he's getting less than two to one. He's going to find himself a three to one disadvantage. So you and I both know that the proper play is to fold here. He might put his opponent on a small pair, middle pair, and think like he has two overcards and it would be a race. That would be faulty thinking. Just wondering, Kenna, if this is a bet he might call against the other two players on the table, but not against LaSalle, who's proved quite conservative. Well, you know. Remember, LaSalle had those early hands that he never showed down. So. Short, short one? No, Cindy. Look at Barrow. Oh, He's I frozen can't. solid. He doesn't know if he wants a call or not. He's like a statue. Oh, my. Wow. I'll bet his heart's beaten, though. Short shit. Shoot. And you know, you were just talking before about this could be a huge balance swing. He's 
made so many great decisions tonight, John Nugent, Kenna James, but this is the first all-in re-raise he's faced. Yeah. Very Nicole. tense, filled call. situation. He makes the call. Okay. Nugent wants to see no. him. And uh, he that? asked, do you have a pair? He was hoping the answer was yes. Yeah. What it is is a dominated ace, but uh, stranger things have happened. LaSalle did likewise to Dean Johnson earlier. If wow. the jack comes, mm -hmm. it'll be Barrow wheeled out. We go to the flop. Nugent looking for a jack. Not there. That is LaSalle. Four or five? I'm going to split it. <laughs> John Nugent saying, I'm willing to chop it. Four and five will work. He'll go behind door number four to see if he sees the jack. Not there. Both players pairing their ace. That's going to do Nugent no good. He still needs a jack or barrel will double up against him. Yeah, kicker must play here. Door regardless. number five. And three <laughs> aces with the king. Every ace on board. That is the biggest pot of the night, I wow. think. Yeah. Thank you. Ooh, it's gut check We're time. Change our dealer. It is gut check time. How about LaSalle Barrow? He's stacking those up. And for a man with the experience that he has uh, mm -hmm. coming into this game, he has acquitted himself so well. One wrong decision can completely change your fortunes in this game. And now Nugent has lost the chip lead. But can he keep his head together and pull himself back into this? It's a long way down. And has John Nugent hit bottom, Kevin? Well, that is the story of this last segment, the rise and fall of John Nugent. You know, it's going to be interesting to see if he can fortify his fortress, maintain his composure in this next level as we as we go up. Yeah, that call's going to be going through his mind. Mm -hmm. And not only now has LaSalle Barrow got the chip lead, but blinds going up, 7 and 15,000. Those are big stakes. What's going to play out now? Well, what's interesting is how these hanger-ons, you know, Kevin Atkins, uh, who's who showed a very balanced game, and Eric Alberg, can he make the charge? for the front line you know right now it's it stands in LaSalle Barrow's hand can he maintain the front position nobody's been able to hang on who will it be Barrow has been flirting with the chip lead now he's got it ram it home it's big money Alberg on the button, and uh, so far he's been the only one who's pushed this level. But with an ace, queen of diamonds, Nugent saying, now is my time to react. And a very key pot here for John total. Nugent. He's Pass. got to win this pot. Pass. Oh, wow, it's a race. It's a race if Atkin goes for it. He raised all and He does pull Hold. the trigger. And is quickly called by Nugent with the ace queen. You're right, Jesse May. It's a foot race. Who's going to be the fastest? Get out your coins. If you flip it and it's heads, Ekin wins. If it comes up tails, Nugent wins. It's that close. Six handed Kev Atkin was trying to avoid this big pair versus the overcard matchup. But right now, he welcomed it open armed. And it's uh, five cards for fickle fate. These two very close in chips. There's a queen and a, oh. six. a six and an ace. Oh my. A six <laughs> queen. The drama continues oh as oh now else. an ace or a queen. Nugent still with four outs, two aces, two queens makes him a bigger, will, will make him a uh, bigger full house than six is full. Oh my goodness. Well, that's just silly putty. I mean, uh, in fact, it's such a silly flop. You wouldn't be surprised if there's an ace or queen left in the deck, but yeah, Nugent doesn't seem to think so. Well, and there's an eight on the turn. There are, there's four of them. There's two aces and two queens. And with this turn of events, I wouldn't be surprised to see one here as we go to the river, Jesse May. Both fellas pumping away here. Okay, it's a four. Play, and uh, boy, unfortunate for John Nugent that uh, the way he's played, all come down to that, even flopping two pair. And uh, he's just looking at his chips being divvied away in the middle. And wow, and okay, you can see, 60, I think uh, Nugent will be left 000. with just a few chips here 
almost uh, an embarrassing, not even a stack left. Just a few nuggets yeah. as if to penalize him for what wrongdoing, I do not know, because he certainly played well tonight. The benefactor, Kevin Atkin. Yeah, who, I mean, be quite surprised that he right where I want you now. those sixes so quickly or re-raised all in with them. That was not something he was willing to do earlier. That did not seem to be his mindset. No, it didn't. But now, Jesse, remember the blinds are up. The levels yeah, are up. The pressure is up. Or, uh, you have to make <coughs> key decisions. He decided to take a stand with the best hand, albeit very slightly the better of it. Uh, John Nugent has done himself a lot of credit by... Uh, the way he's handled this so graciously, he has every right to feel like he's just been uh, tripped up and thrown off the side of his deck. Looking at that hand again, everybody hit the flop, but three of a kind beating two pair at that juncture and wow. holding up. Three sixes devilish for Kev Atkin, who just warhorsed John Nugent, the flop house. And there the parapets of Kevin Atkin. The Blues 2,000, the Reds 5,000. Interesting that since it's got four-handed, uh, there have been a couple big races. John Nugent, of course, taking the wrong end of both of them. But uh, one player who's avoided that is Eric Allberg, who's, fine, Jip, and sorry, John Nugent right now, 19,000. Right, and now look at the other three players. 195,000 for Atkin. 194 for Barrow and 192 for Eric Alberg. Oh my yes. goodness. Pass. Blind on blind and Atkin, uh, he can either say how much you've got yeah. or Close take it. Time. The Thanks. difference Thanks. between Thanks. the call. three chip yet. leaders no, would okay, to find that would be yeah, similar to finding a whisker on a cheek. On a baby, oh, I'm that actually is. quite got surprised. Kev Atkin uh, suited too. decided to move in here. Let's see if this one beats Kenna James. Oh. I know uh, I wasn't much it. more. Yeah. Yeah. Nice jack. Suited. Seven deuce worth trying to take a player out for. Well, yeah. Oh, you, yeah know, right you know he's you. obligated uh, <laughs> to uh, move in, so uh, any two Close. will do. Oh, nuts! <laughs> this is the first break that John Nugent has gotten this level and none too soon and gone dead he's going to be able to move himself up 38,000 a lot different than 19 in the sense that uh, one more double up will make him start thinking yeah, you never say never never say die a flush for John Nugent on yeah. the flop he'll double up here I come yeah scared <laughs> <laughs> And the South Barrel given uh, yep. John Nugent a little hope. Looking at the leaderboard, there ain't much between the top three. And beyond that, Nugent finding the roller coaster very steep at the bottom. He's out in the ocean without a life preserver. How long can he stay afloat? And, uh, how do you think these guys are bearing up to the pressure? They've been at it a while here, Kenna. And does it start to get dizzy down there? Do you start to hear things in your head? Wow, LaSalle Barrow. This is pocket jacks, the third time he's been dealt this specific <laughs> hand tonight. He has had a few cards to help him he along. He is <laughs> an HCR. <laughs> a human card rack? <laughs> Absolutely. Human uh, card rack is LaSalle Barrow. He needs to make something on these hands. These hands are very hard to be dealt for handed. Raised to 40,000 total, pass. That's a very steep price. And John Nugent. I think he will make something because John Nugent has picked up an ace. And when you have so little chips, that's a big hand. Okay, that's John Nugent thinking to himself, the last time I did this, you beat me. Well, the problem that uh, John Nugent is facing here is that if he throws this hand away, he says, what is the likelihood that I'm going to be dealt a better hand in the next few hands? And it is unlikely, so okay, that's why he's going to take a stand pass. here. Mandatory, isn't it? Almost. 
Okay. And it's an elective, but uh, you know, one that uh, you probably did have to take. Nine. Well, Nugent all in, in bad shape, but there is hope. If an ace <laughs> comes, it'll put him in possession At this time? of something like 91,000. Against me? Yeah, I okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can see he's got a 27% chance as we go to the flop. Oh. And that, no, not I a terrible nice. flop. It's given him more outs. Any nine, any ace right now. That's running right. hearts would work. Ten would end it. You got running hearts in there? Put a heart, make it interesting. Asking for a heart, it is a queen. <laughs> So John Nugent, after playing so well, is down to it's the nine. river card. He'll need a nine or an ace, Five or he'll oaks. be shown the door. Oh. And the jacks hold. Some players can look like winners even in defeat, and can a, John Nugent, one of those, he's done a huge amount tonight, showed a lot, played with grace, class. He's a good guy. He'll go a long way in this business. Nothing for it really for Nugent, it was all in or fold, but it didn't pay off and we're down to three. The American internet qualifier is off back across the pond with nothing. Had some big hands there, uh, had pocket queens there early, uh, if I win that hand versus ace 10, got them dominated, uh, been trying to set him up all day on that move. Uh, he hit his ace on the flop and that took me down, I, would, I win that hand, I got half the chips in play, I feel pretty good. Made a couple mistakes, I had ace jack versus ace king. And, uh, I, all I could picture was Marcel, he had a, he called with ace-10 earlier, and I thought there might be a chance. I should have laid it down, I knew better, but I, I called anyway, his pot got pretty big where uh, I was almost forced to call. I probably had, didn't quite have the odds, but I still called, and uh, that took me down. So I had some big hands that, that didn't hold up. Um, that's the way poker goes, so. Four goes down to three, and one thing I haven't mentioned yet, Kenna, is that this game being played in a great spirit, amateurs playing in a, like professionals. Absolutely, you know, it's the attitude that also produces results and good play, and that's what we're seeing here tonight. Eric Alberg, very patient, very disciplined. He said in his interview, or, or, or as I was talking to him before the match, that he had a calm patience. It's really paying off for him tonight. He has just kind of stealthily creeped towards the lead. LaSalle Barrow, the deck is hitting him. Very fortunate, the cards that he's been getting tonight. Three different paths to get here. What's the road through? Is it just one way? No, there's many paths to the championship. Which one is going to work? And don't forget about the dark horse, Kevin Atkin. He's hanging in the balance, too. So it's going to be a dogfight. It's interesting to see how it's going to turn out, Jesse. The card rack, the patient man, or the wild card? Three jokers in this pack. The chips have been moving around the table like past the parcel. No one's held the lead for long and it's still impossible to predict who might come out of here with a semi-final seat. Let's get the cards back in the air. With the blinds at 7 and 15,000, I guess stealing becomes a premium right now, Kenna? Well, I, you know, you just need to maintain your button right. position and uh, pick up those blinds. 30,000 total. Pass. Cool. Cool. Well, now you see each player taking their turn to raise on the button. They all got to walk except for Barrow now, called by Alberg with the 8 10 of clubs. Yeah, and the flop will tell all. Right now it's telling top pair for Eric Alberg, who I do not think will play passive right now. Check. Well, he did last time. Remember, he took off the flop, I think, with like a 6-8 suited or a 6-7 suited, something like that, and he flopped the pair. He played passively, and his opponent caught up. Let's see if he learns anything from that mistake. Check. Barrow and needs a 5 or, a, excuse here. me, a 7 or an ace. And uh, if it does come, Allberg is going to be gutted. He is not. It's a jack. Allberg should lead out into this pot now. It looks like he will. Those are five thousand dollars chips. Thirty thousand. Well, he wait. That's bet. six of them. That's thirty thousand. At LaSalle Barrow. A 
Sal Barrow looking at his cards as if to say, as if looking for something other than what he has, which is ace high. He's got a little bit of thinking to do, doesn't he, Kenna? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. there's a very strong argument to make that the seven and ace are both good. He can be thinking about that, but mm -hmm. is he considering the possibility that the ace is good? He might. He, he's wondering what his opponent has because his opponent Pass. didn't bet on the flop, but he realizes, you know, I only have ace high. I'm going to try and win the war and not the battle. Go ahead and take it down. Well played, Eric Albert. Two small pots in a row for Eric Alberg, but a signal of these blinds, he's the <coughs> midship leader. Mm -hmm. Kev Atkin has displayed two different strategies uh, in the, during the course of this game, confident and desperate, and he's veered wildly between them. <laughs> That's very good, Jesse. And uh, you do have to vary your game. That's the thing, you have to be able to change gears but I'm not sure those are the two gears you want to change right. between. The two gears you want to change between are from discipline and patience to creativity and aggressive courage. And those are the gears that Alberg has displayed here tonight. Now out there with the eight five of hearts. I told you he had a propensity for these middle suited oh cards. It my. could get him in trouble here. Kevin Atkin, pocket kings. Well, this is cool. just cool. one of those situations, Kenna, when uh, Alberg is doing all the right things right. coming up against all the wrong cards. And Atkin, this slow play is devilish. It is, and it could get very ugly should the flop fall bad for him, but it does not. I don't expect Alberg to lose any more in this pot. I think Atkin has all of a sudden gotten a bit worried because uh, the check raise has gone from the shutout to the shut in. 30,000 to the close the door, to yep. the fold Pass. the cards. See, and that's another key element in winning is knowing when you're beat. Okay, he took a stab at the pot. And uh, what is it when they have a sword fight in a, a paré? You know, when you when, when you block the sword coming in at you? Parté? Parté, come on, you're, come on, you're a London. Uh, <laughs> You think they fight with swords in London? <laughs> well, they used to. <laughs> Maybe. They yeah, do. you know when you deflect the guy who's coming, who's thrusting oh. at you, you parry it or, or parry. Right. Uh, parry? What is that thing? <laughs> anyway, I forgot Lucille my point. All that Barrow thing. has been parrying off the blows right and left. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the button here. Yeah, and, uh, he'll play those. <laughs> well, well, we're having a good time up here in the bird's eye view. These guys are sweating and duking it out. It's Barrow's turn. He's on the button. He brings it in now cool. with King-10 uh, hearts. He just lips on here. the button. And that's thrown Allberg for a loop because uh, with that ace in the big blind, it's it's interesting. I mean, if Barrow had raised, Allberg might have pushed. Well, it, well, look at Allberg now with the ace, you know. He's elected, it looks like, to play it conservative as well. And we'll see the flop three-handed. Talk about hidden hands. Who would have expected? Queen seven deuce. It's a miss, a three-way miss. Check, check. There is 45,000. Barrow with 000. position. Will he try and pick it up here? Who needs that 45,000 the most? Well... We will see who wants it the most is really the question, Jesse May. Well, I'll tell you what, there's only one cookie on this table, and I feel like the one who sticks his arm in and grabs it is your likely winner. I love the instincts of Alberg. 25,000. He senses the weakness of his opponents. I think he's betting. I think he knows he has the best hand, and he's representing it right here. Arrow is deep in the tank. Surely he's not thinking about calling. Pass. But the nope. raise would work. He is out. Pass. And uh, that could right there kind of be the difference mm -hmm. between letting this game come to you and going and grabbing the game yourself. Absolutely, Eric Alberg. No misstep there. Dragging another pot. You said, who needs the pot the worst? I think it's LaSalle Barrow, who hasn't won one in a while and needs a pot like a dead man needs a coffin. Barrow is not only short stacked, 
but he is the big blind right now for 15,000. And it'll be Atkin from the button first to speak. Who's liable Pass. to raise with those cards. Pass. And LaSalle getting a welcome walk in the big blind like Jenny Craig getting a donut. <laughs> wow. That has got to be a welcome relief. <laughs> Blind on blind here, and LaSalle Barrow trying to keep up pace. It's found enough aces to do it of late. And uh, how strong will this raise be? Should be the same raise as he has been three times. He should make it uh, 60,000. Very nice. impressed Thanks. with the way LaSalle Barrow has been playing. It's, uh, 40,000 more. He does make right it exactly 60,000. Good play by LaSalle Barrow. Sorry, Jess. Oh, it's just Atkin oh. looking to peel off a flop. And uh, he must have decided, Kev Atkin, that if he hits a pair, he's in position and can get the rest of his chips in, Kenna. Well, that and he's deciding King-9 is, you know, a reasonable hand heads up and you're not going to push me off my hand that easily. I'm going to take the flop and flop a pair. He's flopped a pair of nines. It's the best okay. hand so far. Let's see how he plays it. Checked over to Barrow. You know, Atkins seems 000. to be... I kind of like the way he said, well, maybe my cards aren't cooperating and I'm going to make something happen. And that he did. He bets 50000 with second pair action back to LaSalle Barrow. But what's LaSalle supposed to think here? Olin. Olin. Can't blame LaSalle for doing that. He says if my hand was good before the flop, it's good now. It's not, unfortunately, but he's got six live cards, and uh, Barrow's in big trouble here, Kenna. Five. Absolutely. He's going to need a key card, a jack, an ace, or some kind of running straight. He does have he does have Kevin Atkin out chip, but this would cripple him, and uh, most likely he would hobble off. Yeah, I mean, Very this shortly afterwards, losing this pot if he doesn't catch an ace or a jack on the turn of the river. Barrow saying, give me a card. It is extra outs. The ace of clubs in Barrow's hand means any club, any jack, any ace. But his tight-lipped expression says he hasn't gone as far as he wants. He Not does yet. look determined. It's like he's willing the card off the deck. Can he do it? We go to the river. It's a red card. It's wow. too low. It's a five, and yeah. his wishful thinking not materializing the card he was wishing for, and Kevin Akin, his stubbornness, wins the day there, not wanting to give his hand up and his big blind before the flop. He takes home the pot. Dude, that was a risky play from Atkin, but dogged. And uh, even though that might have been the first misstep from Barrow, you can't really blame him. LaSalle Barrow, he has not been down this low yet. He's there now, 45,000. And uh, with the big blind on him, it's pretty much just pray and pick him. And the big story on that leaderboard, Eric Alberg. Remember last time we visited it not too long ago? He had only one, one hand or two hands. All of a sudden, the big number 17 appears on the leaderboard. This guy put the pedal, the foot on the pedal at the right time. Sal Barrow's chips. The rest of them are in the big blind right now. It's pretty serious stuff for him here. And, uh, is there anything that LaSalle Barrow would be willing to fold right now? I hope not. Atkins not going to take him on. But Alberg certainly will. Race. Race. Alberg sensing a mop-up job. He's got the mop. Yeah, this is the best possible situation for Alberg, and serious trouble for LaSalle Barrow, who is dominated, needing an eight here to stay in this tournament. And uh, LaSalle's standing up now. He 
Yeah, he's been impressive tonight. He has. He certainly has. Jesse May, you know, we thought, you know, he is the amateur of this group for sure, and we thought he would be first out, uh, you know, in talking uh, before the this tournament began. As we look at the flop, Jack 7 5. Oh, that's an up and down straight draw for LaSalle. Six or 10 would serve yeah, him well. So here. that is as good a flop as he could hope for. Or an 8 also. A 6, 10, or an 8. Oh, no, an 8. Ac I'm sorry. Actually, Albrecht already has the jack, so he is going to need a 6 or a 10. Uh, excuse me, Jesse. River card to come. Barrow needing to fill the straight. And LaSalle. Full House does not keep LaSalle in the game. It piles up Alberg and LaSalle Barrow, this is his second time on a televised table, has left his heart on the green felt. Courageous small. stuff. It's come down to just two. We're heads up and each of these guys will be feeling the pressure with entry into the half a million dollar prize pool for just the winner. Don't go anywhere. Two left, and Kenna trying to sort through the pickle that's got us to this point. What has it been that has served both players well? Is it patience? <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, patience, it's discipline, it's choosing the right cards at the right moment, avoiding confrontations. You can see that uh, Eric uh, Alberg avoided confrontations. He folded the sevens like they were nothing. Kevin Atkin avoided the confrontations with the ace king, and you know, and at other times pressing it when they had the advantage. So it's going to be interesting to see whose strategy changes the most heads up and comes out on top. Every gear in play, maybe both players have an Achilles heel. Who's the better player? Mm, well, we will see, won't we? <laughs> cool. Any raise? No raise. Atkin given a free flop here with the 10 high. And uh, Alberg needs to hit something. This no help. Check. Three tens for Atkin, who will, will probably slow play Check. it Five to eight. the dustbin. And uh, if a deuce or four comes, we could be. Oh, boy. Oh, my. Wow. Check. It's tough to make a pair heads Check. up. Check. How about Kev Atkin making quads on the turn quad tens? And uh, Atkin now has Check. the best hand possible, four tens with an ace. Uh, actually, four tens with anything would have been the best hand possible. He, Kev Atkin might just bet like two chips here, trying to eke out any possibility of a call. 30,000. <laughs> <laughs> Alberg did well not to lose any chips there. He sure Atkin did. gave him every chance. He did. He gave him the sale job of the best used car salesman I've ever seen. But Alberg was not buying. That's he was off the lot quickly and onto the next hand. They've played over 108 hands. It's, um, it's been a marathon session here. Cool. And a limp in from Atkin. Allberg's been pushing from that wow. point before, but not with the nine high, he says. Nine high would be, could be good. 60,000 in this pot. That's nearly half of what Alberg has left in his stack. And hard to see him folding here. It's a pair, it's not a big pair, but a pair nonetheless. Atkin with a flush draw and a straight draw. Check. Wow, a dangerous check by Alberg. That could come back to bite him if it's a spade on the turn. It is not, it's a king. At some point, this kid has got to pull the trigger. Now is the time. Check. Is he slow playing? Is he inducing a bluff? Or is he just playing passive poker? Well, we're going to find out right here. 
Yeah, I mean, Kevin Atkin goes to bet. You wonder if Allberg has worked out that if Atkin had a king or queen, he would have raised before 60. the flop. 60,000. Wow. Crucial decision. Pass. And there is a major misstep, the first one of this tournament that I've seen by this youngster. Played 15 hands. Allberg has done very well to stay in it. But Atkin, as you say, kind of deserves plaudits for not giving away the chip lead easily. Or maybe you didn't say that. I'm sure you'll speak <laughs> up if you disagree. <laughs> you were doing fine there on your own. They've played 15 hands. And uh, this on number 16, a pocket pair for Atkin. Plenty enough, you'd think. Yep, I imagine he's going to get his chips to the middle here. And nice this actually isn't bad Raise news 60, total. for uh, Allberg. Uh, oh, in wow. case he finds two, I'm thinking two <laughs> cards over uh, four. How about he, he oh. finds two oh. jacks? This match back in play, it's Allberg all in, but a huge chance to double up right now. Yes, this is uh, This is an automatic call by Atkin. And we are gonna go to the flop. Allberg gonna be a four and a half to one favorite to double up here when it's all said and done and the cards are out. Wow, there's 260,000 in this pot, Kenna. It'll be back to square one for both players if the Jacks hold. Allberg, he must be starting to feel some confidence in his sails. Atkins saying, is it getting all away from me? Atkins not watching the flop, he's counting his chips. Well, sometimes it hurts to watch. Deuce, deuce, three on the flop. There's a couple spades up there. Atkin live with running spades. The turn card usually brings the underdog closer into the hand. Is <laughs> that going to be the case on this turn? Jack would end it. It's a nine. No, another safe one. No straight draw opened up or in no flush draw. So he's going to need a four and a four only or Allberg will double up and will be in a dogfight. It's a six. Jack's up, take the money. And uh, I think the momentum can uh, severely switching in Allberg's direction. He can afford to smile right now, but he's got the game face on. He certainly does. There's no smiling there. And, uh, you know, I find that a little bit unfortunate. Uh, you know, as, as serious as it is, uh, one of these players moving on to the semifinal, playing for $200,000. Uh, you got to have fun in playing this game. There's a lot of people out there in the cold digging ditches, and uh, you should be able to celebrate Pass. when you win uh, some key pots, as Eric Albert did there. Atkin has the chip lead right now, but uh, it's Allberg who feels like he's got a ton of chips. It's, am it's amazing how uh, you know one guy can be cut in half, one guy can double yeah. up, and uh, their moods are completely different. Yeah. Well, or logical, perhaps. Is his hair painted on or? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think uh, coming down the tunnel, there was a severe draft. But that is the style. I don't know. The young guns today, they have the piercings and the tattoos and the Royce. hairdos. Race. 60. Much they did uh, 60, through time, I think. It's just 30. the way of them expressing themselves. Both these players bring in a lot of different weapons to the table, and Atkin has gotten much more aggressive another before the flop there. as this game has weathered on. But Albert's found an ace. Okay. No matter what the hair do, I'm sure Kev Atkin is envious. Re-raise here coming? I would hope so. I think you have to represent your hand. He hasn't, you know, his strategy hasn't uh, bode well for him when he just flat calls and takes flops. He's not flopping uh, well most of the time. Uh, and especially when you're out of position, I think you need to re-raise four to five times. Re 
At least, and he does that. He moves in. Nice play, Eric Albert. Red birds across the line, and Atkins' cards will fly to the muck. We could be seeing a change in the leaderboard. Well, his cards haven't flew to the muck yet. I think they're stuck on the glass there, Jesse May, as he has actually Pass. looked over at his chips and considered calling for the briefest of moments. But your prophecy is correct. His cards are safely in the muck. They're in the machine as we await the new deck and the new pitch. A roll out the barrel. This is the first time in 112 hands that Eric Alberg has cracked half the chips in play. We've seen matches where it comes down to muscle. This is a heads up battle of discipline and patience. Stick the belly in the well, Atkin on the button. Cool. And that strategy has not nice. worked for him before, but he's finally got the flop. Alberg with a very nice hand, especially if the hook hits the board. They both missed, and there's 60,000 in there. Check. Check. You must bet to win here, Kenna. I think Allberg's got the gumption. Check. Check. Well, both players have pretty much dogged it, haven't they? They really have. Both players have gone into a shell. Check. And really, Allberg, the one with the most to lose here, as he is allowing Kev Atkin back in this match. Wow. After having him down <laughs> on the mat. I'll tell you what, it didn't look like much, but that bet came from the bottom of Kev Atkin's shoes. He really, <laughs> it took him a long time. He had to stack his chips three times before he found the courage to make that bet. Well, sometimes and, uh, uh, you do, you have to do that, Jesse. You've got to find the courage wherever it may be. It may be in your pocket. It may be on the bottom of your shoe, but wherever it is, get it to the middle of the felt, and he did there but, uh, as uh, he has drawn back into this match. Kevin, or Eric Alberg had him on the ropes but couldn't finish him off. He's back up, standing up, and we're on to the next round. Yeah, I mean, Race. Race. Uh, Alberg has folded many, many hands in a row and now comes moving with the king seven. And will Atkin recognize how tight he's been? 55 more Quick re-raise all in. in. What's that king got? A dominating hand. He does, king, queen, royalty. And this is the problem when your head's up and you're trying to build image by folding hands. When you do pick up a raising hand like king seven, it still ends up being mediocre and you still end up running into a better hand. So, in, you know, instead of slaying the dragon, he's now created one. And if he should lose this pot, the rolls would reverse. He would become the short stack, and Akin would become the chip leader. Well, this is a very interesting decision for Alberg. It's 100,000 for him to call Kenna James. He can fold right now and know that he's still the chip leader, or he can call and take a chance to knock Atkin out. If he loses, he'll be two to cool. one against. He cool. decided to take the free shot, and you can't blame him. It'll be a bit unlucky that his one of his cards is not live. Well, you know, on a re-raise, it's not really luck. Uh, you got to figure that your opponent has a pair, a king, or an ace. So I think uh, the smart decision would have been to uh, fold this hand. But who knows? Sevens could be lucky for Alberg as we go to the flop. Who knows? This, and he's got a chance to deal the knockout blow to Atkin. Can he do it? Atkin on his face, but leading seven, the operative number. 
Ace 5 10 on the flop. No 7. 7 only for Alberg to win. Anything else? Atkin survives and doubles up. And the match will continue to the turn. Heart's not a factor here. And uh, you can see the tension there. It's a uh, nine Atkin running his hands through his hair, or across his head, rather. So we go to the river. It's oh. a deuce. Hold my heart, says Atkin. And uh, he's bellying back up to the bench. Up, down, up, down again. These two are at it like warriors and hedgehogs. They really are a very exciting heads up match. And we're going, you know, and it's not just winning and losing. It's how you play the game, uh, Jesse May. And uh, with this young gun, 21 year old, uh, I hope he learns from this experience and at least takes home uh, yeah. and, and views this show and realizes he's played extremely well, but apply the tactics of how to extinguish an opponent when you have him down is the lesson to be learned. This is a must move Hold table. Right, and that's there. exactly what Alberg has decided. Yep, and he looks like he's most likely going to get called here um, by Atkin. He's got a king. He's not going to like it, but he's going to call. He's going to find himself at a, about a oh. six to four call. advantage. Yeah, that's what ha what's happened. I mean, uh, Atkin here, Kenna has has realized that Alberg is desperate. Absolutely, and he's got king high, which is you know, uh, you know. A, Better than average hand heads up, so it's an automatic call. And um, sorry, I just don't want it to end, Jesse May. I want it to continue to go on. So, uh, but unless a ten or a deuce comes, well, Doyle Brunson won with this hand. Why can't Eric Alberg? All good things must come to an end, and this debut ball for Eric Alberg is suddenly turning pumpkin-eyed. It sure he is, it's getting ten. close to midnight, as you would say. Or deuce. 10 or a deuce as we go to the turn. It's a five. One card left for the young Swede, or will it be Kev Akin to take home the championship? It's over. Jack, that's it. <laughs> Kev Atkin has done it. He can barely walk straight, can't see straight. What a marathon. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Thank you very much. <laughs> the magnitude of what he's done, Kenna, I mean, that's like running a marathon. And full credit to Eric Alberg. Internet qualifier Kev Atkin, a builder by day, has taken a semi final spot. He's over with Kenna and Jesse now. Serious gut check stuff on the table tonight. Congratulations, Kev Atkin. You had to pull everything out of the bag to win this. Uh, yeah, it was, it was rather nerve-wracking side of last year. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there were so many key hands. Did any really stand out in your mind? Quad tens. <laughs> it's always nice to get quads heads yeah, up. But now, up. don't sell yourself short. I mean, you really put on an incredible performance tonight. You folded the ace king early. Uh, you know, you were against pocket tens in that situation. Yeah, oh. and, uh, and, you know, you got away from some hands, and at other times you danced on the right side of the fence and you made some creative plays. My question is, how do you get that kind of experience? And it says you've only been playing two years. A lot of online play. A lot of online yeah. play. So it's not just the amount of time, it's the amount of experience you get out of that time. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, how, many hours, uh, how many hours do you play? I've cut back a lot now, but I mean, um, probably over the last three or four months, I'm only playing one or two tournaments a week now. Mm -hmm. But over the first year, I was probably playing uh, maybe about f 15 tournaments a week. Wow. I mean, I, mean, I was, was playing right. two a day. So that's, so. A, lot of, that's yeah. a lot of hours. Yeah. You were so impassive on that table, but you must have been feeling the pressure. I mean, emotionally, you went short stack, big stack, short stack, big stack. I was sweating a lot. <laughs> I was sweating a lot in the last five, ten minutes. Well, what, what is the emotional journey when you're going through something like that? Is it, well, you know, uh, you, you seem like you, you had it under control, but what was going on inside? 
It was a mess inside. It really was. <laughs> yeah. It was. Um, it's an unusual experience, really. I mean, it, it, it was. Uh, when I, when I was actually getting short stacks, I was I was trying to hold it together. When I was became, when I became the big stack, I was trying not to you know I was trying not to lose sight of the fact that I could easily be short stacked again. And lo and behold, I was. So it was like you say, it was a, it was a bit of a roller coaster. Well, he's balanced his interest very <laughs> yes. well, and he tin, he's got the <laughs> golden ticket into the semifinals. Congratulations! Yeah, Thank you never very much. certain till the final wire, but you inched over the line, and now just the semis to look forward to. Congratulations again, Kev Atkin. Who will be joining him in the semis? Definitely Connor. Tate and more. We'll find out when you join us next time on the PartyPoker.net World Open. <laughs>